Hello everyone, welcome to day 9 of Advent of Code 2019 in Rust. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of every video, this video is part of a larger series that solves the Advent of Code 2019 problems in Rust. And uh, it looks like we are up through day... I haven't, I haven't uploaded day 8 yet. Interesting. I don't know, day eight is up there. I don't know why it's not showing up on my homepage. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we've done uh, days one through eight, and we are on day nine. And uh, the code for um, this little project is at the Git repository of me, BC Myers. It's called AOC 2019, so you can follow along here. And as I've done for the previous couple episodes, I went ahead and off camera sort of set up for day nine where I wrote a new benchmark, uh, pulled in the inputs, uh, gave us some scaffolding in a day nine module and wired everything up so we are ready to go. And this one is actually pretty straightforward so I'm just gonna try and make a quick video this time. So let's dive into nine. Nine is um, once again a uh, computer problem so we're gonna use our int code computer and it's relatively straightforward so Remember we have two sort of addressing modes in our computer, an immediate mode and I guess what they're calling a position mode. But now we're gonna add relative mode. Um, and relative mode is gonna be indicated by a two, whereas uh, position mode is indicated by one and immediate by, no, position is indicated by zero and immediate by one, or well, relative mode is indicated by a two. Um, and all this is gonna do is we are gonna keep, like we keep sort of a program counter as state, we're gonna keep something called the relative base as state that starts out as zero. Um, and relative mode basically says, take the value at the position of this operand, um, or take the value at this operand, and uh, that's a position. But before you find the position in the memory, add the relative base to it and that is the actual position in memory where you go look for the value that is going to be used um, that is going to be used. This should be clear when I start coding it. But we so we need to add this relative mode and then the only other thing oh yeah and opcode 9 is a new opcode that adjusts the relative base so uh, this starts out at 0 but the program can sort of change it over time by using the opcode 9. Um, and the, the only other thing is the computer's memory is now uh, longer than the ROM. And so whenever it can write to sort of values beyond the program. And so we need to have our sort of memory take care of that um, extra addition. And it says the computer should support very large numbers. But it turns out we've been using 64-bit numbers and that works. So we don't have an issue here. No need to go bigger than 64-bit. Uh, and then the problem, uh, the problem for problem one is just uh, give the program an input value of one and see what it spits out in output. And it spits out that for my input. Um, and in problem two, it's just give the program a value of two and see what it spits out. Um, and so there's really only one problem here today. Um, so let's go code it up quickly. Um, because like I said, my goal is to make a relatively short video. Um, this will be my second video of the day, so. Um, I'm trying to catch up a little bit. I got a little behind, had a busy weekend, um, and didn't get to work on Advent of Code at all for a couple days. Um, but anyway, we're gonna have to modify our computer. So let's go into our computer, and uh, let's see. The first thing we're gonna have to modify, the ROM is fine, the channels are fine. The computer is going to have to keep a relative base, which, I don't think can be negative, but we're gonna make it an I64 in case, uh, cause it's gonna be easy. We're gonna be able to add and subtract I64s from it. So it'll just be easier if we keep this as an I64. Um, so when we create a new computer, the relative base is gonna be zero. I guess I should probably say relative base and program counter. So people know what that means. Um, so then we come in here and execute. And one thing that we need to remember, I sort of forgot this, and this is where most of my debugging was around when I actually solved the problem, 
is that after you start executing again, you need to reset the relative base to zero. And that should be there for alphabetical, why not? Um, and I mentioned our RAM needs to get bigger, but I'm gonna handle that in a different way. So we're still going to, when the, pro, when the computer sort of initializes, right, we're still just gonna have the memory be a vector that is the size of the program. Um, and then we'll handle needing to grow it in a different way later. Um, and for a, long, for a long time, I've wanted to change these. Right at position one, the noun. Um, just for consistency, instead of, because we're not using direct writing uh, anywhere else in the program. So let's use that. Um, that has nothing to do with this problem. I've just been meaning to change that for a long time. All right, so that is execute all done and dusted. When we read instructions, we're gonna have a new opcode, or a new instruction, which is instruction, I didn't know what to call this, so I'll just call it relative base. This is gonna update the relative base. And all it takes is a single argument that can be signed. So we're gonna do that. And comma there. And yes, there's no variance, but we're going to build it later. In execute instruction, we're going to have to tell it what to do, how to execute this new instruction we're going to create. Relative base, and it's going to get an A. And all we do here is we take the self dot relative base and we increment it by A. And that's, it's as simple as that. Um, except for we need that to be a bracket, and we need this to be a bracket, and that needs to go away. Um, input mute, output mute stay the same, RAM stays the same. Oh, here we're gonna have a new mode. And I used my own nomenclature and called the position mode pointer mode, but just to be consistent with how they're calling things, let's change our pointer mode to position mode. And then we're gonna add another one, which is relative mode. Um, so relative mode is indicated by a two relative, and we're now calling this position. Um, let's see. So we need to return position here, and otherwise all this is fine because uh, remember this is the default case. Uh, so if we, well, I won't go over it again because I want to make a short video, but all this works. Uh, read and write, we're going to have to modify, but we're going to modify it on the implementation for vector. Um, oh, here's something that sort of was overly complicated because I just wanted to show you guys how I explain or how, how this sort of works. But if you think about this here, right, we're getting the ones digit by modding 10 and then we lop, lop it off our n. And then we get the tens digit by modding by 10, and then we lop it off. But really, we can just say let opcode equals in mod 100, and in divided equals 100. And we'd have to deal with this ones and tens digit mess, and that can be cleaner. Um, also has nothing to do with today. So here we get into reading and such. So we're gonna change that to position, and we need to add, um, I don't know why it's not yelling at me, but we need to add a thing for relative mode here. So if we read signed, if we reassign value, then really relative mode is very much like position mode. So you just take, uh, so we can do that. And yep, except instead of this value being a pointer, Instead of interpreting this value directly as a pointer as we would normally do in position mode, in relative mode, we are the pointer is gonna be this value plus whatever the RB is at. So all we have to do here is say if mode, if the mode equals mode relative, then let's say val, let's say plus equals self dot, well, Actually, we don't have access to the RB here, so we're gonna have to get it later, but RB. 
and that means that this needs to be mutable. And otherwise, this just works. So now the, the pointer in relative mode, right, like we add RB onto the pointer, and then we use the pointer to go find, to go read into the memory and find the actual value we want, and that's the value we return. So this just kind of works. So read signed will need to take a an RB, which I guess is just an I64. Oh, and we have not implemented eek or partial eek on mode, so it doesn't know how to doesn't know how to check for equality, but that's really easy. We just say derive. We should derive the th all the things here: copy, clone, debug, eek, partial eek. So now you should be able to compare a mode to another mode. And it stopped complaining, so wonderful. Um, read unsigned, uh, we're, still gonna, we're also gonna need the RB. So we can pass it in here. And otherwise, this function is good. And then read pointer. Um, we're also gonna need the RB here. Um, and read pointer uh, acts, when we're in relative mode, it, it acts exactly like pointer mode, except, 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 um, the value has to be, uh, we have to add the RB to it. Because it's going to, this represents a position relative to the RB, not relative to zero. Um, so what we do is we can say mute val. Oh, which means we need to know what mode we're in here. So read pointer is now also going to have to take a modes like everything else, but that's fine. Um, so we get the value out. Make sure we remember to increment the program counter, and then we match on mode dot next dot no. We say let mode equals mode dot next modes dot next dot unwrap because remember this modes iterator can never return none um, and it gives us what the mode is for the next um, the addressing mode is for the next uh, operand and let's match on it and if we have a mode immediate I don't think this can ever happen but let's just say that mode position, then we want to do what, just what we were doing before. Uh, we're going to want to do... Let's get the value out here. So the value in this case is just val. But in the case of mode relative, it is... We say val... It's val plus rb, right? So why are you yelling at me? Oh, this is a result. There we go. And so now this should be updated and just work. So we get the val out here. I guess that we'll call this val2, like we have above. And we'll say val2. So that's that's good. Um, we're going to have to go up and where we're calling these, since we changed the signatures, we're going to have to change them. But let's go to the memory now. So remember, the memory needs to be able to write past the end of the program. Um, so let's just do that here and say, um, say if pointer where we're trying to read from is greater than or equal to self.lin then we want to take self and extend from or no there's a there's a method on there's a method on a vector uh, what is this method uh, there's a method on a vector 
That is something. It starts with a reserve. No, uh, resize, resize, resize. So here, this resizes the vector in place so that lin is equal to new lin. And it puts this value, uh, it fills all the extra space with this value. So we're just going to uh, make the vector big enough and write zeros uh, to all the spots that we're growing the length by. So self dot, um, what was this called again? Resize. And we want to resize it to um, pointer plus one, but pointer is a u64, so pointer is u size plus one. And we want to fill it with zeros. So this is a u size. Um, so this will take care of, we'll never have an out of bounds error, right? Because if we try and read out of bounds, we're just going to grow the memory uh, to be able to read to that point. And so this little business here is no longer necessary. We can just unwrap because this is never going to fail. Yes, and that's read updated. So we try to read from outside of memory, then uh, we're going to give them a zero. And we want to do the same thing with write. If we try and write outside of the memory, we're just going to let that happen, and we're going to let you write whatever you want to write. Uh, filling the rest of the memory with zero. So if pointer as u size is greater than or equal to self dot len, uh, self dot resize to pointer plus one with zeros, and then we will uh, we will get the a mutable reference to the value of the pointer, which can no longer fail now because it's going to exist. And then we'll update that reference to value. And so that's read and write all done. We have a new instruction. What did I call it? Relative base. And it can take an A, which can be negative. So there we go. And this it all just works. So now all we have to do is up at the top somewhere, we're going to have to change how we're calling some of these functions. Um, right, because these now need to take uh, self.rb. Oh, this can just be that. Self.rb. This needs to take a an at mute modes and a self.rb. And we're just going to come in here and fill this out for all of our functions. And then I think we're done. So hopefully this really will be a short video. But I got to add tests. Mute modes self.rb at mute modes self.rb Oh, I'm not sticking with my alphabetical order. Shoot. Oh well. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. We'll leave our parameters not in alphabetical order because you guys don't want to see me go through and change it all. Self.rb, self.rb, uh, self.rb, self.rb, um, self.rb, self.rb, at mute modes, modes, self.rb. Uh, self.rb self.rb at mute modes oops self.rb and finally self.rb and I think I think that should be all we need to do to solve this problem um, it kind of helped uh, that we abstracted our computer out a lot and uh, we've been working with it so I know I know sort of where everything is and what everything does and it's familiar but let us oh in read we cannot we cannot borrow self as mutable that makes sense 
So if we try and read beyond the bounds, can we just make this mutable and see what happens? Oh, we gotta make it mutable up here. We need to make all these mutable. Well, let's not do this. Let's not do this. Let's not do this. Uh, let's see if this works uh, with just expanding via write. And if it fails, then we will do something else. So let's write expect to do right here. And when I run the test, we'll see if we ever hit that case. So let's test this and see if it works. For old days. It still passes all of our oh, day two and day five, so that's good. So this will get the input for uh, the new day, which is data 09. So it's just another encode program, right? And we know how to deal with those. So we say uh, let ROM equals ROM from reader, which does our parsing for us. So let's pass in reader. This can fail. And let's call this reader. And it is going to need to be, oh no, it doesn't need to be mutable. Reader. Um, and then we create a computer, right? Computer equals computer new. And we pass it in input and output channels. But since we're not doing any funny um, sort of chaining, we can just pass in defaults here. So this means we're going to need create computer uh, ROM computer channel. Uh, now we prime the computer with the right input. So computer input, we get a handle to the input mute channel and we push the back one for the first problem. Then we computer.execute the ROM with no noun and verb, and this can fail. And then we computer.output mute pop front, which can time out. And this gives us answer one. And let's see if we get the right answer for answer one. So we'll just put it here. Oops. Uh, answer one to string and our computer needs to be mutable for us to do any of this stuff and so I don't know first try this is probably not going to work but let's see uh, cargo run day 9 data 09 hey and it worked the first time that is indeed the answer to the first problem so as you guys can see, this was really quick and dirty because we sort of made our computer easily extensible. So there wasn't much to do with this problem for us. Um, let's do computer dot, I mean, I don't think there's gonna be anything left in here, but let's clear out our input and output. Uh, output mute out put mute, and then just prime the computer with um, another input, uh, push back to, and execute the program again with a different input, and we'll get out answer two for our output. And print out answer two. Let's run that and see if it works, which indeed it does. That's the right answer. So there you have it, guys. That's uh, that's all the changes we need to make to do day nine, which for us was, was pretty simple. Um, there are some test cases, which I'll add, um, because you should, you should test your code. Um, we should be doing way more testing than we have been doing. But if you get this program here, it produces a copy of itself, which is kind of which is kind of neat. So let's try to test that. So if we get this program, it's going to produce itself. 
so we'll take it in as a string and we will compare it as a slice for our output so there's our first test case tuple so let test cases equal um, a slice of tuples there we go first test case um, second test case I think there's two more let's do that and uh, that second test case is this program should produce a 16 digit number and in fact you know exactly what it is right because I mean you can I've worked with this enough that I can almost read that I can read these right so we have a multiply instruction we're doing we're taking using this as immediate values right so we're going to multiply these two numbers together and store it in position 7 which is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 store it here and then we go to 4 and we take the value in 7 and we put it in output so we should get back just the multiplying these two numbers together which I hope is a six digit, 16 digit number but anyway our program for this one is that um, and we can do even better than the test cases and we can say that the answer in output is going to be well this number times it's uh, itself, yeah, because this is just it again. Um, so that's number two, done. And number three is, well, this is obviously just going to output in immediate mode this big long number, right? Um, so the program is, I'm probably missing, yep, I'm missing a one. And this is going to output. Uh, this number <laughs> why are you yelling at us for mismatched types cargo test uh, cargo check check tests Oh, there it's, these are array, these are arrays. So if we do that, they'll turn into slices. And if they're slices, we can put the they, they're the same type, and we can put them in here. I think. Yeah. Um, it's intended to multiply with overflow. No. These should be i64s. There you go. Um, they were treating them as, I guess, if you leave off the type here, it sort of defaults to, well, it knows it has a negative one, so it's going to pick an unsigned, it's going to pick a signed integer, it must default to i32. So, i64, uh, well, I guess this needs to be a 64-bit computer, so I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad we built it that way. Um, so, for test, for input, output, in test cases, right? We need to let ROM equals ROM from reader of reader, uh, which can fail or can't fail. I forget. Oh yeah, obviously this can fail. This is where we're parsing. So we need a reader. Let reader equals IO buff reader new of input as bytes. And this is a test, so unwrap. And then we say let mute computer equals computer new channel. We should create a default computer constructor um, that just does this, because why do we need to keep writing channel all over the place? Then we computer dot execute the ROM. And no noun and verb, and this can fail, so unwrap. And then we just check the output. So let's take, uh, let's say let output equals computer dot output mute dot try iter dot collect into a vector. 
and let's assert eek that uh, this is expected and this is actual expected equals actual and we might have some type problems here expected and we do we do we cannot compare uh, do we do this no sorry uh, yes this and that oh no this has to be a slice so turn that into a slice Let's see what the type error is. I can't tell which one's on the left and which one's on the right. Um, so we made these slices and we're iterating. This is sort of an iter. I think this defaults to just iterating. Mm, star. There we go. Okay, um, so there's all our test cases, and let's see if they pass. Cargo test. Oh, we're ignoring this test case. So let's turn that one on and do cargo test. Oh, we failed test nine. Uh, oh, we failed on to do. So we can't. I knew this was going to come back and bite us. We can't read. Uh, Our memory needs to be big enough to do a read there. So how are we going to grow this automatically? So without making these all mutable. Uh, I mean, here's what we could do, right? Um, I want to do this dynamically, but let's just do it up front. So we're reading the RAM, and in the beginning we'll say self.ram dot extend from slice. Well, we'll do our resize thing, resize and make it I don't know a thousand twenty four long, and fill it with zeros. Let's see if it works now. Oh, but that's not going to work for comparing our. <laughs> Still gets the answer right, but see, we we've added all these zeros on the end, right? So we can't. Uh, we don't want to do that. We actually want to dynamically resize. I wanted to. I, I had this working before. How did I do it? Did I just make? Um, I think I might have just made all these read functions take a mutable reference, but that might run us into trouble. Uh, let's just try that. Let's see what happens. Mute self. Mute self. Mute self. Mute self. Uh, mute self, mute self, and do you still compile? You do, so you should pass your test now. Or no, we got to add back the um, automatic regrowing to read. So read also needs to do this. If you try and read from something beyond, then we're going to grow the buffer, and this can now be a straight up unwrap because it will never fail. So let's do cargo test now. And everything passes, including day nine. Um, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is day nine. Um, adding a new uh, addressing mode and making our RAM uh, sort of 
grow if it needs to so we don't ever have out of bounds errors. Um, so with that, I'm gonna push this to GitHub, git status, git add all, git, well, uh, let's just one more time, cargo test, and one more time, cargo run uh, nine data 09. And we get what I believe are the right answers. And so let's get commit. Did I add already? Get status. I did. Get commit m day nine. Get push. There we go. And how did I do on time? Ooh, 35 minutes. So close to a 30 minute video. Well, I'm going to sign off here. And until next time, uh, I will uh, see you guys later. Bye.